So let's talk about herpes simplex 1 and herpes simplex 2 infections or cold sores. These are very common infections occurring usually around the mouth or around the anal genital area depending on the virus that causes them. Usually HSV1 or herpes simplex virus 1 occurs around the mouth. HSV2 herpes simplex virus 2 occurs usually around the anal genital area but those two have been known to swap places meaning you can get HSV2 around the mouth HSV-1 around the privates really depends on your activities and the people you associate with. So, these are very common infections. In fact, HSV-1, around 80% of the population has been exposed to this virus according to some studies. And as far as HSV-2, the numbers were around 20% a few years ago. They may be on the rise. Now, as far as the infection itself, the way it appears is actually pretty classic. It appears as a tingle or a burn over the affected area where the eruption is said to occur. Then that tingle turns into redness of the skin or the, or the area that is affected. And that redness transitions into bumps that are grouped together. Those bumps turn into vesicles or tiny little blisters. And those blisters turn into sores that eventually crust up forming these little dry golden residues on the surface of the area and eventually those go away by themselves. That's a self-limiting condition. What is the issue with herpes simplex virus infection? Well, HSV infection is first of all a sore, an eyesore, meaning it's actually noticeable. It can be a source of transmission or infection for people you come in contact with. And once you get it, you can get it again. That infection can actually recur because the virus actually goes into what we call the latent period which is a dormant stage, the virus goes to sleep in nerve endings that feed the area and the nerves can actually store or harbor the virus and eventually the virus can come out in an inopportune moment and restart an infection over the same spot where it started off on the first episode. So these are pretty, uh, pretty significant issues for anybody who has herpes simplex virus infection. Most people don't get that frequent outbreak episodes. However, some people do. Those people require what we call suppressive therapy, meaning some of those people elect to take a daily tablet that would prevent or decrease the rate of infection or rate of outbreaks these people experience at any given time. And that, that actually makes them less likely to form outbreaks and transmit the virus that can actually decrease the infection they can cause with other people. Now, as far as treating the condition, first of all, well, we need to really avoid anything that would aggravate the area any further. There's a tendency, almost a reflexive tendency among people to treat any area that's irritated or infected very, very harshly. And those can actually, those practices can make the area more aggravated, more angry, and the infection can last longer, it actually can form a secondary infection on top of that, because the skin is compromised. So avoid hot water, avoid excessive soaping over the area, avoid scrubbing or any physical abrasion over the area, avoid application of alcohol or any disinfectants, unless you're advised by your physician to do so. Those can all aggravate the area, can cause the area to suffer longer and the infection to last longer. What you can do is cover the area up, preferably with a band-aid and some moisturizer. I like petroleum jelly, I like my creamy Carnauba moisturizing balm. The typical antivirals are not that effective to treat the infection, really curb the infection. So I really recommend just using a plain moisturizer for the infection. In some cases, dermatologist or your primary care physician or your ob guide may elect to prescribe systemic antivirals. Those are taken by mouth and they can actually in many cases shorten the duration of the episode or if you're early enough they can actually stop the episode from happening altogether. And that's where the suppressive therapy that I mentioned earlier comes into place. A lot of the times if you feel the area is about to have an outbreak you can take the antiviral medication ahead of the episode and stop the episode in its tracks. Now, very commonly, cold sores get confused for other types of skin conditions or mucosal conditions. 
Most frequently, I see canker sores being confused with HSV or herpes simplex virus infection. There are other forms of ulcerating conditions that are less likely to be confused with HSV because they are chronic, such as lichen planus. There are other conditions that cause sores inside the mouth, such as pemphigus or pemphigoid. And then there's cancer that can cause ulcers. The last few conditions that I mentioned are actually chronic conditions, so the chances of confusing them with herpes simplex virus infection are low. However, it's been known to happen. So if you have a sore that's forming over the mouth or around the anal genital area and persisting for more than a couple weeks, please go see your board certified dermatologist, consult your physician, find out what's happening. Also, my advice is do not self-diagnose cold sores. They can again be easily confused or canker sores and for other ulcerative colitic conditions, most frequently for canker sores. And when they do, the treatment of canker sores and HSV is very different, so they could benefit from the right diagnosis and the right treatment. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you got any benefit from it, please hit the subscribe and like button. Thanks again for watching. God bless. Brian Little.